So today, I have the Packy One Chip Challenge with me. And this is gonna hurt. So let's go ahead and read this thing. Uh, it says, inside one deadly black tortilla chip. The One Chip Challenge, Fear the Carolina Reaper. Now today, yes, I'm gonna be eating this. But I'm also gonna be trying to talk about capsaicin some and five somewhat interesting things that I found out this past week. So it says, can you handle this deadly heat? Made with Carolina Reaper peppers. Created for the sheer pleasure of intensity and pain. What to expect? Right here. It says, mouth on fire, short term loss of speech, impaired vision from tears, extreme profanity, and death. Uh, thanks for that warning, Pac. Yeah, I needed that. How to enter the one chip challenge if you dare. Eat the chip. See how long you can last without reaching for milk or ice cream, which is in arm's reach of me right now. Don't say we didn't warn you. Take a video of your attempt to survive the one chip, hashtag one chip challenge. The chip and coffin must be in view. So I'm trying to hold this up here. Uh, tag at Packy Chips on your Instagram feed or tw Twitter to include hashtag one chip challenge and hashtag sweeps to be added to the Packy wall of infamy at Packy.com. Your profile must be public. Well, I'm not getting on that wall because I don't have Instagram or Twitter, but hopefully they'll add YouTube or uh, at least Facebook or something on there. So... Here's the chip. You can see it already has some deadly looking dust over here on there. So I'm excited to get that on my fingers and have it burn for a little while. Got the little, well, hopefully I can wear this proudly. And there it says, any last words? The Reaper is waiting. Uh, well, let's just jump in this. I'm going to jump into it. Try to remember to describe how it tastes and things this time. <clears throat> smells a lot like... Uh, I've ordered dried reapers from Puckerbutt before. Smelled a lot like that. It's just so crunchy with... Ah, so much powder on this thing, and I can't open it. Ooh. Yeah, my fingertips are going to be burning for a minute. That's a big chip, too. And I got lucky enough to get it in one piece, so most of the time... These videos, they break up in transport, so Packy, thank you for giving me a good one. Alright, so it smells like dried reapers. Hopefully it doesn't hurt as bad. Let's start this. Cheers. Trying to chew good. I have a feeling I'm going to start coughing on that powder. Okay, so since I just ingested a decent amount of capsaicin, let's start talking about it. Okay, so it's 5 minutes, 50 seconds on my stopwatch here. We'll try to make it at least 5 more if we can. So, first thing that I want to start with about talking about capsaicin is a myth that I hear a lot. A lot of people out there think that uh, the heat is in the seeds of the pepper. 
I have a jalapeno here with me. I'm just gonna cut it down down the center. And although a lot of people think that, there's there's a good reason that they think that. It might not be right, but if you look here, the white part of this pepper is called the placenta. Now that is the spiciest part of the pepper. And as you can see, the seeds attach right to that. So this is why seeds get a reputation for being spicy, I believe. You know, that's not backed by science, but you can see how somebody pick a seed off there. And, when, and even when you do pick the seeds off, you do to get little parts and flesh of the placenta. So next one is like capsaicin has antifungal properties. So I read a study from 2008 by this guy named Tweaksbury. I think that's how you pronounce it. I might put it on the screen. But what they did in this study is they had non-spicy pepper plants and spicy pepper plants. And they wanted to look at how capsaicin affected this fungus called Fusarium semitexum. So basically that's the fungus that's predominantly you know, responsible for ruining seeds in a pepper plant. So they wanted to study if more capsaicin meant less infection. And what they found was is that in fact it does. So the pepper plants that had no heat on them had twice the infection as the pepper plants that had a that were pungent or had a high percentage of capsaicin in them. And they ranked these from zero to ten, being you know a good looking seed would be zero if uh, the seed was already black like that chip. It would be a ten. But that chip did taste pretty good. I, I've heard a lot of people say it tasted awful. No. Tastes all right, actually. I'm not dying yet. It's building, though. That's what reapers do for me. I don't know why. I ate a dried reaper once, sat there for three minutes. It was perfectly fine. Then all of a sudden, I died. Uh, so the third one is birds. Birds, any type of bird, really, specifically ones that fly at far distances, uh, are Pepper's best friend. So birds are immune to capsaicin in a way. And because of this, peppers kind of, they kind of have a mutual relationship. So capsaicin doesn't burn the birds. Some reasons thought through out there that you might run by is taste buds. Birds only have about 20 to 40 taste buds. Uh, now this isn't technically the reason why they are immune to capsaicin. But their TRPV1 receptors, and TRPV1 receptors are capsaicin and vanilloid receptors, and they're responsible for the pain that I'm feeling right now. Uh, so their TRP, their molecular sequence, or basically just the way that it's their receptors are organized in, on the molecular level, they're not similar. They're a little similar to ours, but they're different. And because they're different, they don't react to capsaicin in the same way. Uh, so this is definitely building. Another thing about birds and capsaicin is their GI tracts don't destroy the seeds. So it goes back to that mutual relationship. Uh, so they can carry their seeds wherever, drop them on the ground. Hopefully, a plant will produce there soon. Our GI tracts, tracts destroy the seeds. You can't grow a seed once it's passed through a human being. So, I think that's about five minutes, almost five minutes anyway. Uh, the last thing is why does milk help? Why does ice cream help? Well, it comes to do, it has to do with a protein in dairy products called casein or casein, you'll hear it pronounced. So the thing about capsaicin and casein or casein, whatever, the protein, they're both nonpolar. So you're drinking the milk, protein's coming down through there, and it not isn't necessarily attracted to the capsaicin, but when it does touch it, it attaches to it. 
And what it does is it breaks the bonds that are in between the capsaicin and your TRPV1 receptors. So that's why milk helps a lot more than water because water is not fat soluble. It just pretty much brushes up against the capsaicin. You know, forceful water, chugging may move the capsaicin some, but it isn't dissolving it, it isn't breaking any bonds and changing the amount that it's going to irritate. So foods like um, cottage cheese, for instance, the curd in cottage cheese is just nothing but straight, well, not nothing but, but it has a high percentage of casein in it. And because of that, it helps with the spicing. The last thing is uh, the heat once the pepper is off the plant. I ran across this study in 2004, I can't pronounce the names, sorry guys, whoever you were. Basically what they found was, is 12 days afterwards, the plant was a little bit spicier. Next video I might do a video on things that make this plant spicier or not. But guys, guys and gals, here we are. I survived the reaper. It has been approximately seven minutes now. The, the burn has started going down. So this wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I watched, uh, watching LA Beast, watching his video kind of worried me a bit because I know he does some crazy insane things. Uh, so here's this. But he does some insane things and I've seen his reaction to it and he looked like he was in a lot of pain. So he had me scared, but we're good. I'm good with this today. Hopefully there's no cramps and stuff to come after. One thing before I hop off here, some of you guys have been telling me on Facebook that you don't know how to like or comment on a YouTube video. Probably just means that you're not signed in with your Google account. So if you have a Google uh, email or Gmail account, then you have a YouTube account. The only thing you have to do is use that email and that password and you'll be able to like the videos, comment on the videos, view other ones, etc. Thanks for watching. Uh, this was good. This was spicy. It was a, it was a challenge. It was hot. Uh, not fresh pot hot, but hot. If y'all guys and gals have a good day. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing if you like the video. <sighs> Goodbye.